iterables are used by for statements, as well as generator expressions and list comprehensions, and all those other iterative constructs in Python. So now we can finally understand, after many, many weeks, exactly how a for statement works. The for statement says for name and expression, execute this suite. And it evaluates the header expression, which yields an iterable object. So I told you this many weeks ago without ever telling you what an iterable object really was. Well, an iterable object is just something that gives you back an iterator. For each element in that sequence, in order, we'll bind the name to the element in the first frame of the current environment, and then execute the suite. This is all old news, but the mechanics about how it happens are new. What happens is that the iterable object that's the value of the expression provides an iterator, which gives you access to each element in that sequence in order. And so by invoking next on that iterator, we get the value that we want to bind to name in the first frame of the current environment before we execute the suite. So when executing a for statement, iter returns an iterator and next provides each item that we're iterating over. So if I said counts is one, two, three, a list, and then for item in counts, counts is iterable. When you call iter on it, you get an iterator. The iterator lets you access one, two, and three by invoking next on it over and over again and binding the result to item, at which point we execute the suite printing the item out. So this is equivalent to saying counts one, two, three, and then items is what we get when we invoke iter on counts. And then we'll try to do the following until we raise some exception, we're going to bind item to items.next, the next element in the sequence. And then we'll execute the suite. So here's the part where we're binding the name item to the next value in the first frame of the current environment. And here's where we're executing the suite of the for statement. And this keeps going until we see a stop iteration exception raised, at which point we do nothing. So we don't re-raise the exception, we don't print an error, all we do is pass. Pass is a statement in Python that does nothing at all. So why does this even exist? Well, an accept clause needs something here. So pass is a way to fill that gap and have Python do nothing at all. And then you get exactly the same effect as the for statement using a while statement.